Good morning, saints. Good morning. What a beautiful September Sunday morning in the UK. And wherever you're watching from, it's a beautiful day. Whether it's evening or morning or afternoon, it is a beautiful day. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We have made up our minds to rejoice. And once you do that, all creation falls into place. Everything God created said, look, that child of God wants to be happy. Let's do something for him, for her to be happy. That's how it works in the kingdom. The things that daddy created await your manifestation. Everything God created works for your good. The sun works for your good. The moon works for your good. So there's nothing. The trees, the birds, the sea, the animals, everything was created and put there for your good. So start to enjoy life, okay? Start to take life seriously. Start to make up your mind to understand what life is all about. You're not just here to, uh, you know, function on on control <laughs> participate actively okay active participation today is sunday 11 september 2022 i i want to apologize already for you know sometimes you think 2022 and you say 2020 i'm sure you guys know what i'm talking about so Sleep of tongue is called sometimes because I, I've gone to listen to my message and I heard myself say 2021. So 11th September 2022. Let's go. Matthew 28 verse 18. That's what we want to use and pray right now. Matthew chapter 28. So when I, when I, when there's a slip of tongue, you fill in the the, the, the the gaps because we are supposed to be knowledgeable. Okay, so Matthew 28, verse 18, I'll just read that quickly. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth okay all authority he didn't say some authority he said all authority all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth and then he gives us the instructions go therefore and make disciples of all nations not some nations baptizing them in the name of the father the son the holy spirit teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you. I am with you always. Verse 20, Matthew 28. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. So remember that all authority belongs to Jesus and he is with you, the I am that I am. Not he will be, not I was, I am. Always I am. Luke chapter 9, verse 1 to 5. Luke 9, 1 to 5. So that when you pray, you pray with reason, with authority, with, with knowledge, with, with boldness, with confidence. All right, Luke 9, verses 1 to 5. Then he called his 12 disciples together and gave them, he gave them power and authority over all demons, not some demons, and to cure diseases. He sent, he sent them to preach the kingdom of God. He sent them to preach the kingdom, kingdom, kingdom. I've been preaching kingdom for weeks, 
for months, for years. <laughs> Think kingdom. It's not about you. It's about the king. He sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. And he said to them, take nothing for the journey, neither staff, nor bag, nor bread, nor money, and do, do not have two tunics apiece. Whatever house you enter, stay there, and from there depart. And whoever will not receive you, when you go out of that city, shake off the very dust from your feet as a testimony against them. What is Jesus saying? As a disciple of God, go out, be free. A workman deserves his feet. Anybody who acknowledges you, takes you in, feeds you, takes care of you, that person is blessed. Anybody that sees you and disdains you and, and, and talks bad about you and rejects you, he says, don't even have anything to do with them. Shake off even the very dust on your, from your feet as a testimony against them. I'm not even starting. Look at that. People who, who think, I mean, I know, I know human beings have always been faulty, but you have, you have to discern what is good and what is bad. And, 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 and uh, um, merge, agree with what is good. Work with what is good. When you see good soil, sow into it. Don't, don't just... Don't just say, oh, it's their thing. No, it's kingdom thing. We work as one. You receive from me, I receive from you. We cannot do this. No tree can call itself a forest. Many trees have to be together before, and then it's dense enough to be called a forest. So can we do this kingdom thing together? Not your thing and my thing, but our thing our thing so if the preacher is going out without food and 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 clothes that means somebody has to take care of his food and his clothes while he's doing the right thing i'm talking about good soil and good soil here deep calls on to deep iron sharpens iron so one hand washes the other we need to understand during this age and this time that the that kingdom is paramount. That's your foco focus, that's my focus, okay? So with this in mind and understanding that all authority has been given to Jesus and he gave that to us, then work accordingly. Don't be a slave, be a king, all right? I need us to get this mindset. If you are diseased, Jesus says he has given you the power to get rid of the diseased okay so uh, he gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases diseases is diseased so you feel you don't feel at ease your body is kind of under the weather so you you say i have the authority to get this behind my back so that i can focus on kingdom business. I am here to do the Father's will. Shall we pray this morning and ask God to give us this mindset because that's where it starts. As a man thinks, so is he. As, as you think, whatever is in you, your conception, your habit, that's what you are, that's what you become. As a man thinks, so he is he. So let us think kingdom so that we can be kings. Please, 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 God help us. Can we pray this morning and say, Lord, change my mindset. Change the way I think. Remind me, Holy Spirit, that I have all the authority. Jesus has bestowed a kingdom unto me. And I am king and ruler in this kingdom. Marco Asarata. Eskalama Sanctum, Aziba, Aziba, Arigaroda, Azakata. Father, we give you praise. Father, we give you honor. We come to you 
this morning, this afternoon, this evening, whenever your children will be listening to this, we come to you by the power of your Holy Spirit in the matchless name of Jesus. Lord, we give you praise. We thank you. We honor you because you honored us first. Thank you, O Lord, for giving us this privilege. You created everything on earth before you created man. You did not create us into an empty place. You provided everything we needed before we came. And you did it because you loved us. You didn't want us to come and, and, and live in an empty place and, and, and have nothing and, and, and just be, be, be empty. No, you filled the earth and you gave us the authority. Call these things whatever you want. That's what they will be. I give you that authority to name the animals, the trees, whatever you call them, that's what they'll be. So you have given us authority here on earth. The heavens, even the highest heavens belong to the Lord. But the earth has he given to the children of men. Father, we receive this gift of territory, Marco Sarata. We take this territory and we rule in your place, on your behalf. We understand that we are children of a king, the most high king. And so we treat ourselves that way. And we receive the, the ability to think like kings, to act like kings, to live like kings. Thank you, Father. Jesus says, it's a privilege. I give you the keys the, to understand mysteries. It's not given to everybody. So, Father, thank you for giving us this mystery, the ability to understand mysteries, things that are strange and foreign to so many. You make it come home to us. We bless your name. We love you. We worship you. We honor you. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. Um, one more thing. One more thing before we, we go into the message of the day. We are going to talk about... Moses, because the title here is the rod of authority, and we are going to read from the book of Exodus. We've been talking about kingdom, rulership, mindset, and all these things, and we need to understand who we are in Christ. It's a privilege. But before we get into all that, I want us to also acknowledge a servant of the kingdom. Queen Elizabeth II, she served to her last breath. That is exemplary. This is what I'm talking about, kingdom mindset. Oh, I know some of you will say, oh, but she was a, a queen. Uh-huh. Then you are talking like some, like the servant with the one talent who went and buried his talent. Whether you are a king, a queen, a subject, you are a child of the king. So your mindset should always be the same. One has five talent, one has two, the other one has one. Same thing. God gave you according to your ability. So this Queen Elizabeth II, as we all know, 70 years ruling the kingdom of of UK, United Kingdom, and she served. She served to her last breath. That is the, the example of servanthood. She knew what she needed to do. Whether she was ill or not, she, 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 when duty called, she knew it. Some of you, you, you come... <coughs> You call in sick at work. One little sneeze, you call in sick at work. What, what kind of kingdom mentality is that? So I want us to acknowledge this, this queen. Moses was the same. He worked on, who knows whether Moses would still be here. 
one day God said, don't bother, come up the mountain, I'm taking you away today. We have to understand that there is a way and there is a way. Which way do you want? There are ways of doing things right. There is that excellent way. There is that outstanding way. And we have, see, I've been talking about kingdoms. And Queen Elizabeth is that example. Not because she lived in Buckingham Palace. No. It is what all of us need to be like. Children of the king. You serve till you are last. Because as long as you have breath on this earth, you have work to do. So don't sit around and be lazy. Oh, I have one talent. No, that one talent, use it. So let us honor her with one minute of silence right now. And may her soul rest in perfect peace in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Okay. So let's continue. Exodus chapter 4. Exodus chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 1 to verse 9. Exodus 4, 1 to 9. Then Moses answered and said, But suppose they will not believe me or listen to my voice. Suppose they say, The Lord has not appeared to you. So the Lord said to him, What is in your hand? He said, A rod. Then he said, Cast it on the ground. So he cast it on the ground, and it became a serpent, and Moses fled from it. Then the Lord said to Moses, reach out your hand and take it by the tail. And he reached out his hand and caught it, and it became a rod in his hand. That they may believe that the Lord God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob has appeared to you. Verse 6, furthermore, the Lord said to him, now put your hand in your bosom. And he put his hand in his bosom. And when he took it out, behold, his hand was leprous like snow. And he said, put your hand in your bosom again. So he put his hand in his bosom again and drew it out of his bosom. And behold, It was restored like his other flesh. Then it will be, if they do not believe you, nor heed the message of the first sign, that they may believe the message of the latter sign. And it shall be, if they do not believe even these two signs, 
or listen to your voice, that you shall take water from the river and pour it on the dry land. The water which you take from the river will become blood on the dry land. Father, we thank you for what you want to impart to us today. We thank you for what you want to speak to us today about. We get our hearts ready. We get the soils of our hearts moist. We stand in position. We position ourselves rightly. We come into right standing with you right now. We ask Holy Spirit, flush out anything in us that is not teachable, that doesn't want to receive from your goodness. And Lord, replace us with all that is good. Replace those things that you flushed out with your goodness. Anything that doesn't look like Jesus in us, we give you full permission, Holy Spirit, to flush them out. And the word of God, this is Jesus Christ. The word made flesh. We receive Jesus, the word of God, into us today, right now, this minute, and always. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> All right. Let's get into the business of the day. So we've been talking about kingdom identity and frankly speaking, this is the whole purpose of the gospel. This is all that the gospel is about from creation. God created us in his image. He is God. He is king. So we are the king's children. Yes, we messed up. And then he came again and, and said, I make all things new. I love you beyond your mistakes. But you must see your mistake, know your mistake, acknowledge your mistake, repent of them, and come back home. As simple as that. You are, a you are my child, and you will always be my child. That's the story of the prodigal son. He thought, oh, I've sinned, I've done wrong, so now I'm only supposed to be a servant. The father said, no, you, were, you are my child, and you will always be my child. So once we get this, then we will not give Satan the permission to trample down on us. Because when we think servant, that's what we are. So we give him the chance to make us <laughs> to trample on our backs. We, we, we become his, his footmat. But once you understand who you are, the child of a king, and not just any king, the king. And you understand that you are a kingdom child, a king's child. And you behave like that. You think like that. Then Satan cannot just come and play stupid games with you. Mentality. Mindset. That's why we've been talking on this topic again and again and again. Be kingdom. Preach kingdom. Sleep kingdom. Live kingdom. Eat kingdom. Whatever you do. Kingdom is what you want. Jesus at the age of 12 knew and said, did you not know that I'll go about my father's business? Whose business are you going about in this day and age? What are you going about doing? Whose business are you about? So let us remember the good news that man is once more an overcomer because of what Jesus did. That's good news. Yes, you might have sinned, but remember, Jesus says, I am with you always. If you don't feel that he's there always, that means you should check yourself, not him. Check yourself. The father released his word, the word became flesh and lived here on earth as mortal. How come it's easy for us to agree that angels who are spirit can appear in the form of 
human beings and the, and we and we find it difficult to believe that the god that created those angels can also choose to come in the image of the human beings that he created you see that is because satan has darkened the mind of people and they cannot think we choose to believe lies when you see the truth you doubt the truth believe a lie doubt the truth because you have not trained your mind to discern good and bad that's the purpose of preaching the kingdom people have done their thing for too long can we go back to doing it the way Jesus said we should do it the way father said from genesis let us create man in our image that they will have dominion he gave this earth to us to rule on his behalf he is in heaven we are here the heavens even the highest heaven belong to god but the earth has he given to the sons of men how much of this earth are you ruling over there's enough space you know you don't have to drag spaces with anybody the fact is that a lot of people don't even know their their worth and what they are supposed to do so their their portion of this earth are just lying lying around you know the, the uh, uh, like mantles that have been lying around nobody is picking them up territories that have been laid west nobody is taking them you don't need to drag space there's enough space in the world you think god didn't know how many people will be in the world when he created the, the earth stop fooling yourself with 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 nonsense news the day god created the sea did he has he gone back to add salt to it when he created the earth he knew how many people will be here and there's enough for everyone there is enough for everyone enough space enough food enough everything in this earth for every human being that is here the problem is that human beings have mismanaged what has been given to them mostly due to lack of understanding my people perish due to lack of knowledge it's mismanagement that's why you see all the chaos that's why you see all the lack all the trouble all the sickness mismanagement we are not doing it according to kingdom principles we need to wake up we need to wake up god created this earth for us when the appointed time had come he fulfilled the will his own will and and that that means jesus the word of god came down to earth fulfill everything the word had to fulfill the word that, that was spoken the word had to be fulfilled even to the point of being baptized john the baptist said no i know who you are the lamb of god that was slain before the foundation of the world even though i was born 6 months before you in the physical you were there before me you should be baptizing me jesus said no all righteousness must be fulfilled the word what has been laid down has to happen and here we are john the baptist knew who jesus was and here we are looking at truth and choosing to believe a lie can we just do ourselves a favor take time lock yourself in your room and start to think apply those cells that god has given you there's enough nonsense out there you don't have to be one of them you have the privilege of hearing this so you have a choice those who don't know this don't have a choice they only have one that's all they know 
to you have to wake up know the difference and then let the world know there's a different way there is a more excellent way there is a different way you didn't just come to earth to be fed by your mommy grow up go to school finish school get work and just work and sleep work and sleep work and sleep and play games and and, and that, that 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 you should you should you should you should you know make you furious like is this all is this all why am i here so let us wake up god himself put his spirit in human beings human beings inhabit we we carry we are the temple of god we inhabit the spirit of the living god and so we are supposed to rule on his behalf here on earth i need us to change the way we think last week i said if you think like an employee that's what you are but as a kingdom child you should always think as the owner of the business you don't see things messed around and you just look at it and walk past and think oh that's their business no it's your business god put you there in that job to represent him let those who don't know this be servants you be king the holy spirit will guide you he is your guide he is your teacher he is your helper god almighty has chosen to be your helper and yet he is the ceo of heaven and earth he owns it all i always said the holy spirit is my managing director He is the CEO of all things in creation everywhere all the galaxies the earth the heavens everywhere and this almighty god wants to help you but because you are lazy you refuse to open your ears to his perfect instruction you want to do it your little way when he has big things for you let us wake up in order to represent jesus we need his spirit to dwell in us you can't do his thing on your own he wants to do it through us if he dwells in us so he does what he wants through us so now it looks as if you are doing it but in in essence it's not you it's the spirit of god doing it through you That's why Jesus taught us your kingdom come your will be done not my will his will I'm just a vessel surrendered to his will I said Lord you gave me free will but I've chosen to give my will to you just do your will You see And then you stop to struggle let him be king because when when you are in his presence that glory rubs off on you automatically naturally that's when you stop to toil that's when you stop to suffer because yes he's given you that free will and you say lord i give my will to you because i know your will is better than mine just do your will in my life do your will in my life what do i want with my will what do i know about tomorrow your kingdom come your will be done not mine i'm clever enough to know that your will is better than mine and you you love me enough to give me a choice and and so because i copy you um, i say okay i have that choice but i allow you to to manage which child a 2 year old tells the mother you stay home i'll go shopping and cook my food you see lack of understanding the child is happy even even bigger children they, they want to do nothing trust me 
Mommy should cook, mommy should clean, mommy should do this, mommy should go to work and bring money and cook food. Yeah, that's what it is. I just want the provision. But when you're an adult, you start to understand, okay, this is daddy's business, I'm in daddy's house, so I have to chip in. I have to chip in. I can't be lazy. But then it's not toil. You, you enjoy what you're doing because you are eating from what you are doing. You are, you, you are part of that business. It's your business. Daddy's business is your business. I need us to get it. Let God do his will through us here on earth. And let us be willing to receive instructions from him. We've been talking about hearing from God. You don't just hear from God. You have to act accordingly. Moses, come and see what, what it looks like in heaven. The tabernacle looks like. Go to earth and do the same. So you listen and you obey. And that's why Jesus says, on your own, trust me, you can do nothing. You can try. You will just end up hurting yourself. So as God has chosen us for this season, he, he has not made it a secret. He has, this book has been there for centuries. So there's no secret about what God wants from us. The problem is that we, we have not settled down to find out. So God has chosen you and I the same way he chose Moses. In the story we just read in Exodus chapter 4. Moses was chosen and directed by God on what to do and how he would do it here on earth according to the will of the Father in heaven. God chose you the same way he chose Moses. We might be chosen in different capacities. Of course, we are chosen in different capacities. Some have ta five talents, some have two, some have one. But you are chosen anyhow to listen for your instruction and do accordingly. Moses was a human being just like you and I. He didn't have ten heads. He just had one head like you and I. The, the, the power behind what he did was in his obedience to God. We know at first he was agitating, he was doubtful and all that. But yeah, we get that. We get that. But once you have an understanding of who is talking to you, that's when you start to say, okay, I don't get it, but just do your will. The power that Moses had was in his obedience. He said it, God, I'm not going anywhere until you go with me. That's why Jesus says, on your own, you can do nothing. Moses got it in the Old Testament. We, you and I are still struggling in the new. The power that Moses had was in surrender. Have you surrendered your will yet? Or are you still saying, okay, God, you wait. Let me try it my way first. You are hurting yourself. Your will, not mine. You've given me free will and I'm clever enough to, to hands up and say, let your will be done, not mine. When God called Moses, was it for an easy task? Of course not. So if he has called you, you it won't be different. Was Moses fearful? Of course he was. But did he overcome at the end? Of course he did. How did he overcome? Through God, by God, in God. Not on his own. With all those stubborn people. Yeah, it, 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 it's daunting. But God didn't say, go do it by yourself. He said, 
Offer me your vessel. Let me do something mighty through you. That's what we forget. We think we are the ones doing it. Moses could do nothing without God. He had to learn to be obedient. He had to learn to listen. He had to learn to surrender. Because he obeyed, he knew how to surrender. And God doesn't send anybody out on his behalf and then just let us do what we want. No, he, before he even sends you, he will tell you what to expect. Yeah, you wouldn't know from A, B, C, D, T, or Z, but he will show you points on the roadmap. Here we start, and then later on we'll do this. And so this is just to encourage you. That, so you have an insight. You can, you can see the journey to some extent. If he told you everything, you will be overwhelmed because it's not about you. It's too big for you. So he'll just tell you the ones you can handle here and there. When you, when you pass that level, he'll show you the next. When you pass that level, he'll show you the next. That's why you know it's God. That's why you know it's not you. And he shows us these bits and bobs along the way to encourage us so that when you start to to feel overwhelmed or, or doubtful and fearful, you will say, okay, but he told me at so-and-so time we will do so-and-so thing. And you're like, okay, we are not there yet, so I have the will to carry on. He, does, he knows it. So he shows you these things to encourage you. He show, we talked about it last week. The Holy Spirit will show you things to come, things that... People that, has, that are, are not present, he shows you the future. That is to encourage you on the journey. It's not about you. He, he, he has already mapped the road out. So you have to understand that and walk on that road he has mapped out. He knows the end from the beginning. So he doesn't start anything that he hasn't already finished. So that should be your consolation. That should be your encouragement. If God has sent me on this journey, that means that he knows the end already. It, for me, it might be new, but not for him, not to him. It's not new to him. So before we get into that Exodus 4, like I've just said, like I've just said that uh, uh, he won't send you out without... Uh, giving you an insight into the roadmap. Let's go back to Exodus 3, verse 19, so that you see that before he encountered Moses in Exodus 4 and, and gave him the instructions to go, he had already, you know, planned what to do. And he encountered him in the burning bush, told him what to, to do, and then the rest of the story. So let's let's read Exodus 3 from verse 19. So he's sending, God is sending Moses to Egypt. He says, but I am sure that the king of Egypt will not let you go. No, not even by a mighty hand. So God knew the future. He told Moses ahead of time, Pharaoh will be stubborn. You see, we, we read this and we miss it. God has shown you a glimpse of the future. It's for your encouragement. As if, Even as I'm sending you to Pharaoh, I already make you understand he will be stubborn. So don't take it, you know, like anything strange. You know it already. Pharaoh is going to be stubborn. He will not let you go. No. Not even by a mighty hand. So you know. Verse 20. So I, so I, God says, so I will stretch out my hand and strike Egypt with all my wonders, which I will do. Can, can you see that it wasn't Moses? It was God. 
Moses was just the, the physical vessel that God did it through. Exodus 3, verse 20. I will stretch out my hand and strike Egypt with all my wonders, which I will do in its midst. And after that, he will let you go. When I, when I show Pharaoh who I am, he is bound to let you go. But know it now, he is going to be stubborn. He won't just agree. Verse 21. And I will give. Listen, is God still speaking? He's showing you the roadmap. He's telling you what he wants. He's telling you his plans. You just need to comply. I will give these people favor in the sight of e the Egyptians. And it shall be when you go to finally when Pharaoh agrees, when you go, you shall not go empty handed. So I'm going to provide for the journey. Verse 22, but every woman shall ask of her neighbor, namely of her who dwells near her house, articles of silver, articles of gold and clothing, and you shall put them on your sons and on your daughters, so you shall plunder the Egyptians. God has told you what is going to happen ahead of time, before it happens. If you don't know, go and ask him. All he needs is a vessel that is obedient to him, that allows him to do his will through that vessel. Are you that vessel? Am I that vessel? Will it be daunting? Yes, because it's bigger than you. It's not about you. So after he told Moses all these things, Pharaoh will be stubborn, but I will, you know, cause this and this to happen, and you won't even come out empty-handed. You gather all the wealth of Egypt. Then Moses answered, that's you and I here now, Moses answered, but suppose, <laughs> love it, but, okay, okay, you've told me all these things. What if, what if, what if, what if, what if? Suppose they will not believe me or listen to my voice. Suppose they say, you see what stops us? What people think, what people say. We forget what God has said and we are listening to what people say. You think this Bible was written because of no Moses? No, because of you and because of me. God wants you to know that there's no situation that you are in that he has not already planned ahead for. He's just using Moses here to reveal you to you. So you are not the first in that situation. After God has said, I will do this, I will do this, I will do this. I just need a vessel on earth to represent me. Moses is like, but suppose, just suppose. Suppose they will not believe me or listen to my voice. Suppose they say, the Lord has not appeared to you. Moses, you are lying. Victoria, this Jesus Christ that you are talking about, you are lying. Then I will stop. Okay, they don't believe me, so I'll stop talking about Jesus. See, that's what keep people in bondage. You know what you know, but instead of doing what you know, you listen to people who have no mind. Did God reveal himself to you or did he reveal himself to them? He revealed himself to you to go and tell them. So you know what they don't know. Why are you waiting for their opinion? They don't know what you know. The Lord said, tell them the Lord... The, I have appeared to you. They say, what, what, if they, what if they said the Lord has not appeared to you? You see, what if, what if, what if? 
and we miss our calling. We miss our destiny because of what ifs. Verse 2, so the Lord said to him, what is in your hand? It is always what he has already given you. And the simplest things. Something you have already. The simplest things. That's what, because he's God, he can use anything. What have you got? Elijah asked the woman, what have you got in your house? You say you are dying. What have you got? Oh, a little oil, a little bread. That's fine. It's enough. When will we have it is an enough mentality in this kingdom? I asked us that question last week. Do you have it is my jar is empty mentality? Or do you have, yeah, I don't care what I have. It is enough. We talked last week about when Jesus told his disciples to feed the thousands of people that had followed him for days. And they said, oh, we'll need to work for so long to make so much money. We are out here in the woods. There's not, no city in sight. We can't feed these people. You better just send the people hungry away. God said, what kind of talk is that? What have you got? Oh, we've got nothing, but we can see this little boy with uh, two fish and five loaves. Jesus says, that is enough. It's enough. What have you got? What talent did you come into this world with? He put it there, you didn't put anything in you. So whatever you have is enough to do kingdom business. Exodus 4, verse 2. After Moses is trying to bring excuses to God, God is not impressed at all with your excuses. If he gave you one talent, he knows why he gave you one talent. So stop being lazy. Go and start using your one talent. What have you got in your hand? A rod. Fine. Cast it on the ground. You see what I can do with a rod. And so he cast it on the ground and it became a serpent. What happened? Moses ran away from it. That's the rod he just had. But now because the supernatural has entered... He's afraid of his rod. But you were just holding it one minute ago. You see, we are afraid of who we are. We are afraid of things around us. We are afraid of the people. Fear, 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 fear. God says, fear not. I am with you always. I need us to change our mentality. I need us to change. God already says in, in that chapter 23, I will give the people favor. I will give you favor. You come out with loads. Yet because we have not been there, do you think God doesn't know that you have not been there yet. Why do you think he's telling you these little, or giving you these insights? It's to encourage you. For you to say, okay, Lord, I don't get the whole picture. I don't understand it all. But I have chosen to trust you. You are the one giving me free air to breathe every day. You've not asked me to pay for it. You wake me up every morning. I think I should be able to trust you by now. That's all. That's all. I will be with you always. Not it, sorry, I didn't I, I even missed it there. I am with you always, not I will be. I am, I am always, I'm there. You are the I'm the air you are breathing. I am with you. On your own, you can do nothing. If I take away the bread, you are gone. 
I'm giving you that breath to do my will here on earth. In heaven, you don't need that. Heaven, in heaven, you just survive. It's a different atmosphere. Here on earth, you need the oxygen. So I provide for your needs as long as you are here on earth. Same thing he was telling Moses in chapter 3. They will find favor. In verse 21, chapter 3. And I will give, I will give these people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And it shall be when they go that they will not go empty handed. God has already planned for your success. You wouldn't be here if he hadn't. You will not be here if he hadn't. Because he had finished with you before he sent you. You are his workmanship designed to succeed so you can't fail when you agree with him you cannot fail you cannot fail Moses here was fearful at the beginning did he fail no he did not even with all the stubborn people that he had to to lead he worked so long he was 120 and because he had now come to know God and he had been in God's presence. He wasn't going to die anymore. Some, some of you choose life instead of choosing God. That's the problem. Jesus says, I lay my life down. Nobody takes it from me. When you have come to know God, then you lay it down. That's when you have it. That's when you have it. Jesus says, if you love your life more than me, you, 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 you've already lost it. Moses came to know God. And he stayed so much in God's presence. At the age of 120, his eyes did not dim. His sight was still very clear. He was still strong. God had to say, okay, enough. You served me enough. Just come with me to the mountain. That's it. He, he, he didn't see Moses sick and lie down and die in bed. No, no. He climbed up the mountain and he told the people, bye. See you on the other side. Because of you, I cannot physically enter the promised land. I'll be there before you get there. That is what it means to work with God. Stop making yourself too important. You are not. You are not important, please. Unless you give your life to God, God makes you important. Because then he is the one living in you. That's why Apostle Paul says, it is no longer I that live. If you don't lay your life down, you haven't got a life. Because the air you are breathing is not yours. So your life is not yours. The sooner you lay it down, the sooner you receive it. Because now God can trust you. Jesus said, nobody can take my life from me. I lay it down. Apostle Paul knew it. Moses knew it. Do you know it? Peter asked, we've given up all. We've given up everything for you. Jesus said, good, because I'm going to bless you here and I'm going to bless you forever. If you haven't learned to give it up, you haven't got anything. The sooner you give it up, the sooner you receive it back or pressed down, shaken together, running over. Because then God can trust you. That's the secret. If, 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 if you did not know, that's the secret. Otherwise, you are toiling, you are toiling, you are toiling. Why, why do you think that religion hates Christianity? Yeah, because religion is toil. While you, as a Christian, you walk in favor and you receive favor. And they don't understand why you should be smiling when they are dying. So they hate you. 
And Jesus said it. He said, don't worry, they are going to hate you. They will be killing you thinking they are doing God a favor. And that's what is happening. Your mindset toward God should be kingdom mindset. Father's business. I don't beg, I rule. I don't beg, I rule. I have a kingdom that has been bestowed unto me. So I rule. Why do you think you need the rod? The rod is for rulership. You don't need more. King Ahasuerus had to point the scepter to, to, to Queen Esther. Every king needs a rod. That's why we are talking about the rod of authority. If you can't have the, the king's mentality, you can't have the authority of a king to rule. And all you need is the rod from God, the rod of authority. You are in the position of leadership here on earth. Those who fight you are rebels. I'll tell you that again. Maybe it will boost your confidence. Because you are the child, a child of the king. You are God's child. He is king. So you are in a position to rule. So you have the authority. You are in the position of leadership. So those who fight you are rebels. And trust me, nobody fights a king and gets away with it. You remember Jesus at Gethsemane? When, when those soldiers came to arrest him and Peter in the flesh took out his sword and and, and started fighting. Jesus says, put it away. You don't even get this. You don't get this. this. This business is higher than what you think. If I wanted people to fight, it's not you. You have no, no, no ability. I'll just signal headquarters. And instantly angels will be here. And all these people will be flat. Calm down. And that's why if you read the Gospel of John, when he asked them, who do you seek? All of them, they fell, they were on the ground. He just asked them, who, who do you seek? To show Peter, I don't need a sword. I don't need a sword. The power is in obedience. Jesus obeyed to the point of death. That's why he's the king of all kings. That's why he's alive today. Are you a Christian or not? If you fight this authority, you are a rebel. And you pay for it. So now later. Read Psalm 110. Let me take you to Psalm 110. You need to know the word is the word that saves you. The word is the sword of the spirit. Once you understand what the word is talking about, then you have liberty. You walk in authority. You, you, you walk in boldness. You walk in confidence. Because the word works. Have, I said it last week. Kingdom works automatically. Everything falls into place. No, no, no clog in the wheel. No, 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 nothing is missing. Everything is perfect. That's why you need to know whose side or which side you are on. Psalm 110, 110, a Psalm of David. These are people who got it. Oh, if they could get it in the Old Testament, what are we doing in the New? It's because you've not made up your mind. A Psalm of David. The Lord said to my Lord. See, he, he saw the Lord and he saw the Lord. That, that alone is mind-blowing. He saw the Lord and he saw the Lord. And people are still saying, Oh, 
God cannot have a son. No, the word became flesh. It's the same God. He saw he knew it in the Old Testament. The Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. That's what I'm saying. When you rebel, when when you fight this God, you are a rebel. When you fight this king, you are a rebel. So you you will be made to become his footstool. You are under his feet. He sits and he puts his feet on you. That's why you should never allow Satan to make you his doormat. He should be your doormat. You step on him. Once you know your identity. Sit at my right hand very nicely and gently until the time comes. Yeah, certain time is, is yet to come. I will make him your footstool. The Lord shall send what? The rod of your strength out of Zion. We are talking about the rod of authority. It's about kingship. It's about rulership. It's authority. The Lord shall send the rod of your strength out of Zion. Rule in the midst of your enemies. You are king. Nobody can oppose you. Nobody can oppose you. Your people shall be volunteers in the day of your power. In the beauties of holiness, from the womb of the morning, you have the dew of your youth. David was seeing things in the spirit that he's like, he's ancient of days, yet he's young. Yeah, the everlasting I am. Ancient of days, but never old. The Lord has sworn and will not relent. You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. That's Christ. That's us, Christians. Take on, put on Christ. Take on that identity. It doesn't matter about, don't, don't worry about the what ifs. What if they don't believe? What if they say? What if they, who cares? Know who you are. Know what you know. And stand for it. You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. The Lord is at your right hand. He shall execute kings in the day of his wrath. Yes, there are kings and there are kings. Which side are you on? Some kings will be executed on your behalf. Remember uh, uh, Zip and Zalmon are the kings of, uh, what's his name anyway? Um, the kings of, um, when the children of Israel came out of Ziba and Zalmona. They were kings. They were executed. They were running from Joshua. No, know who you are. Some kings will be executed because of some kings. <laughs> so don't, don't, don't think that every, you know, everything is the same. No. Some animals are equal, but some are more equal than others. <laughs> Trust me. We are not all the same. We might look uh, alike, but we are not. I have a DNA that you don't have. But you can step over if you like. It's free. The Verse 5, Psalm 110. The Lord is at your right hand. He shall, he shall execute kings in the day of his wrath. He shall judge among the nations. He shall fill the places with dead bodies. He shall do it, not you. You just be obedient and enjoy daddy's house, daddy's estate, daddy's provision. Don't be a lazy child. Walk in daddy's business and enjoy the, the fruit. Verse 7, 
he shall drink of the brook by the wayside. Therefore, he shall lift up his uh, lift up the head. So go back and read that. It's a messianic reign. So whose side are you on? What have you chosen to be? What have you chosen to do? It's up to you to sit down and rule or to go down on your face and lick the dust. And somebody else is trampling on you and somebody, and, and somebody else is making you their footstool. You can sit and rule or you can be the footstool. It's up to you. Exodus 3 from verse 21 22 turned slave into rulers. They became wealthy because they were favored overnight. One day they were slaves and poor. The next day they had all the wealth of Egypt. Which one do you want? It's your choice. You have to make up your mind. Nobody is saying that it's a walk in the park. Kings have duties. I just said about Queen Elizabeth, she walked till her last breath. Yeah, we know, we know the last official duty. But do you know what else she did from that moment? Which other paper she had to sign? I'm sure, I'm sure that woman would have lived till 100. But by this act, God said, baby, I am taking you. And this is what people forget. God, God takes people at their best moment. That was exemplary. She, she was ill. That's why she wasn't in London in the first place. But even though she was ill, she said, wherever I'm at, what have you got in your hands? Wherever I'm at, come there, I will still execute my duty. God said, that is top class. I'm taking her before it's too late. She could have lived till 100, only four more years. She honors other people who live till 100. Why couldn't she? She could have left, lived easily till 100 years. But personally, I'm, I'm just talking about my personal thing now. Personally, I think that was top class service. And God said, I'm taking her now before anything will contaminate this, this excellent, this outstanding work that this woman has done. We have to think like that. Work, work, as long as you have breath. You're not, you're not doing any cheap thing. This is an eternal kingdom that you are part of. Think, think, think high. Think good of yourself. You are the king's child. Nobody says it's going to be easy all the time. It wasn't easy for Queen Elizabeth. But she did her duty till the last. And you and I are called to do the same. Moses did the same. Verse, verse uh, chapter 4. Verse, uh, verse 1 of Exodus. Moses answered and said, But suppose they will not believe me or listen to my voice. Even with the, with the promise of deliverance that God bestowed on Moses, all the wealth that he told him they were going to take out of Egypt. Moses was still hesitant. We get that. We get, we get it that there's a moment in time that you'll be like, oh, God, if you don't do this, I am weak. I am not feeling well. I am, yeah. But then you say, okay, God, as long as I have breath, I will serve you. And if I've done enough, take me away. If it's the end, let it be the end. So no, nobody is saying you will not feel weak or tired or whatever. But 
make up your mind to do anything that you can do because God rewards that. Oh, my daughter was beat down. She wasn't feeling the best in her, in her, see this flesh can't handle you, can't help you for too long. But you have to understand, I am not first and foremost this flesh. This is just my, my covering. So, there may be promises of goodness, promises of deliverance, of wealth, but there comes a time when Moses said, oh Lord, what if? We get that. So, ask the question, what if? But listen again. Because God knows that you are in the flesh. He will keep encouraging you. How many signs did he give him? Three. He showed him the sign of the rod first. He ran from it. He told him, okay, put your hand in your bosom. And it became leprous. Why did God have to go that he, he could have said, but I've told you once, that's enough. No, he's too kind. He understands that you are frail. He will work with whatever you have. He just wants you to trust him and be obedient. He will meet you at your point of, he came down to earth. You couldn't go to heaven. So if Moses was hesitant, so you may be hesitant too. And that's why you are hearing this. So that you will realize that you will also overcome at the end like Moses did. The story did not end here in chapter 4. He, he, God knows that. Even Jesus in Gethsemane said, Daddy, is there no plan B to this thing? Because Jesus saw the pain. But then he switched. He said, no. Nope. <laughs> Not my will, but your will. I know why I came to earth, and that must be fulfilled. Moses made it. He overcame. At the end, so shall you. Just learn to trust God. It's not by might. It's not by power. But by my spirit, says the Lord. He alone can empower you to do his big work. The work is bigger than you. Clearly. So don't depend on yourself because you fail. You won't be able to do it on your own. It's bigger than you. You need supernatural help. You need help from above. We just read chapter 10. He will send the rod of your strength from Zion. No, we just read in uh, Psalm 110. I don't know what I said there. I, I said it at the beginning. I, I say things and I, you know, I sleep. I, I heard something. I even heard myself, but I, I didn't even know what I said. I meant Psalm 10. Psalm, Psalm, see, there you go again. Psalm 110. So let's get this thing going. Overcome your fears. God knew you would be fearful. That's why he says it again and again and again and again and again. Fear not, fear not, fear not, fear not. He knows it. He knows it. He's not taking him by surprise. He gave Moses here three signs. The, the rod one, the, the leprosy one, and then he told him, when you go there, take the water and pour on land, it will become blood. He knows your infirmity. He knows your weaknesses. He understands that sin caused this flesh to be weak. So in order to succeed, you have to depend on him. Moses succeeded. That's why we are still talking about him today. That's why we can learn from him today. And he was in the Old Testament. We can do better. Overcome your fears is not about you. Jesus said in Matthew 28 verse 18, I am with you. I am. I'm there with you. I am with you always. Not will be with you sometimes. 
He didn't say, I will be with you something. You just go. Once in a while, I'll meet you on the road. No, Jesus didn't say that. He said, I am with you always. You wake up, I'm there. You go out, I'm there. You sleep, I'm with you. Even while you're sleeping, I'm, I'm watching that no hair is falling of your head that I did not uh, uh, plan. He is there. And if something tries, don't forget, even if it falls, Jesus will replace because he makes all things new. Remember the blind man that was born blind? All he needed to do was spit on the ground, mold some mud, because that's what we are. Smear it on the guy, say, go wash. He washed, he came back seeing. Only Jesus can do that. And he will do it for you. He's doing it for others. He'll do it for you. Don't let, suppose they will not believe, suppose they will not listen, uh, suppose they say this and that. Don't let that stop you. What if? What if? What if not? What if not? You allow the what ifs to cripple you. You allow the fear to cripple you. Oh, what, what, what if people think I'm, I'm this and... No, who cares? You know what you know. They don't know what you know. Don't let, don't let that be your fear. What will people think? What will people say? I really don't, don't care what people think or say. As long as I've heard from the Lord, that's all I care about. Don't make people's thought your thought. Allow, allow other people's thought to cripple you. Why, why do you have to take on their own identity? Be, be who you are. You are, you, are, you are the child of a boss. You are the boss in charge here. So let's remember that. Let's remember that. The CEO of all creation is asking you today what's in your hand. Are you ready to go for me? I don't care what you have. It's enough. What do you what what house do you want to live in? It's affordable. You get it. Because he owns it. He owns it. He told the children of Israel, you live in houses you did not build. You eat from vineyards you did not plant. What have you got? It's enough. When he told 12 people, go and spy, 10 came back. Oh, we are grass grasshoppers. That's what they were. The two that knew the identity, the, if, even at the age of 80, 80 or 80 what? Uh, um, Caleb said, I'm going for the mountain of the giants. Come on. Let's not do this, this thing on our own. If, even if, even if, you were not there yet. Let's take, for example, yeah, you are still that halfway Christian. But you've heard this message today. I know somebody that, uh, that you know, as a business counterpart, people, um, non-Christian, invited him to, to play games. And he had, he had to choose uh, a password which they knew nothing about. <laughs> and he chose Holy Ghost Fire. <laughs> so, and that, I mean, no password, uh, nickname, you know, the one, you know, like a, a username. So, you know, they are playing together and they, all the time they are shouting, Holy Ghost Fire, go! Holy Ghost Fire, you are turn, Holy Ghost! They didn't even know what they say, and this guy was laughing. It's like, and this is how you, you bring God into every situation. Stop, stop leaning to them. Let them lean to you. Those games you can play, but don't let the game play you. And stop playing all kinds of games that will drown your mind. There are, there are still things you can do that are... You, I, I know I don't play games, but I know there are things like football or whatever. Things that can relax you as well, if that's what you want. At the end of the day, most of it is waste of 
your 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 holy time. It's a waste of time. Yeah, you can think, oh, I'm using that to relax. Fine, but don't 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 dwell in it. The time that you are using to do that, you can use it and do better things for yourself. You, that, that's what it means to, to manage life as a king. You know what you can do and you know what you cannot do. Don't, don't make it a lifetime of games, a lifetime of just sitting on the couch, a lifetime of doing things that have no eternal value. We are not here just to live life here on earth. We have a long time ahead of us. This is just a drop. Life here on earth is just a tiny drop. So let's wake up. Moses was shepherding God's people. God says, now go. He, I mean, he, he, first he was, he was a shepherd. So the point is, what, what are you doing that God can use? He was you know, when he left Egypt, he, f he fled from Pharaoh when he killed the Egyptian. Okay, so he went to Midian. He was the, the shepherd of this Midian priest and married the daughter. So for 40 years, he thought that was his life. But God hadn't finished with him. He was born to rule. That's why God exceptionally sent him to, to Pharaoh's palace to learn how to be a king. He knew he was a king. He knew he was a leader. He knew he was a deliverer. That's why he went out to see what was happening to his people. But that um, you know, incident happened. And he thought, okay, that's the end. I've killed somebody and that's it. They found out. So he ran and, and gave up on himself. But God didn't give up on him. That's what I'm saying. God knew what he wants you to be on earth before he sent you here. You may not know that, but that doesn't matter. Go, go ask him, find out. Why am I here, Lord? So Moses ended up from the palace to being a shepherd. So God said, okay, since now you, you can shepherd, now go back and shepherd my people. God can use anything. Go back to Egypt and shepherd my people. The shepherd's rod is good enough for me. That's all I need. Because when, when you read later, that rod becomes God's rod. It wasn't Moses' rod anymore. Don't remain where you are with unbelievers. Shepherd them to green pastures. Take them out. Take them out. Don't, don't just relax and think, oh, that's it. No. Time you can spend on building your business, spending with your children, doing God's work. You are, you are sitting and using it and, you know, family is important. If you know, you don't know what to do, spend that time with your children. They will value it more than toys. And God will ask you for an account of your time. The time I gave you on earth, what did you use it and do? That's why people like Moses, that, that's why people like Queen Elizabeth, that's why people like Paul. They work till their last breath. Because you will account for the time God gave you. Yes, you can run away in fear, like Moses ran away from the serpent. That, you know, the, the rod that became a serpent. But God said, now, I want, I want to... Strengthen your faith. Go and pick it up. God didn't change it back to a rod and say, no, he asked him to pick it up as a serpent. That is to, to, to make you know, I can do things that are outrageous. He said, throw the rod down. The rod became a serpent. Moses ran. God said, now go and pick up the serpent. I want to put you in charge. I want to empower you. To see that that serpent is nothing. God didn't turn this, the thing back to rod before Moses speak. No, he picked the serpent. So you are in charge. You are in full control. It was the, the moment of empowerment. 
And, and it is God who makes it happen, not you. He just wants to see, do, does this person trust me? Does he think I'm going to stand here and allow that snake to bite him? I'm not saying go start playing with snakes. I'm saying if God says, just like we are reading, don't take it out of context. Read it in context. God gave Moses the authority over serpents, just like Jesus gave it in Luke chapter 9 that we read. I give you, let's go back and read there. I know we read and forget. Luke chapter 9. Verse 1. Then he called his 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases. He sent them to preach the good news. Um, I think it's chapter maybe 10 as well. Uh -huh. Ten, uh, Luke 10 verse 19. Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions. Luke chapter 10 verse 19. I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. You see, he did it with Moses. And he's, he repeated it here for you and I. Is the same God. I am with you to the end. And he said, they Nevertheless, do not rejoice because I give you this power that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Kingdom, 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 kingdom. We are ruling over principalities here on earth, but we should rejoice. Because our names are written in heaven. Not because we have power over sickness and demons and, and scorpions and serpents. So let us, let us really wake up. You are a leader and you want others to know. You want to walk in that power. You want to walk in that authority. You know what they don't know. So don't settle for what they know. Settle for what you know. And that's why God gave Moses different examples to, to empower him so that he could build trust. So the more you walk with God, the more you build trust with him. And he, and he says, my word can never pass away. So verse 20 of chapter 4, as we are closing, Exodus 4, verse 20. Then Moses took his wife. Remember, I told you he was a shepherd of, of the Midian priest. Married the, his daughter. So he took his wife and his sons and set them on a donkey. And he returned to the land of Egypt. And listen. And Moses took the rod of God in his hand. By this time, it was no longer his, his normal shepherd's rod. It had become the rod of God. So whatever is in your hand that you give to God becomes something of God. So you are not just who you are. You have changed in that moment. You allow God to live in you. So you can't be a normal human being anymore. Stop talking about being normal. You are not normal. You are not supposed to be normal if you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. How normal is that? Normal according to heaven, not normal according to here. God infused Moses with himself. Even in verse, I'm going backwards now, verse 14 to 16 of Exodus Exodus uh, 4, Exodus 4, verse 14. So when Moses kept arguing and arguing, so the anger of God was kindled against him. And he said, is not Aaron the Levite your brother? I know that he can speak well because Moses was like, okay, God, I can speak. I can speak. I know he can speak well. And look, he's also coming out to meet you. 
when he sees you, he will be glad in his heart. So God already planned all that. He knew all that. He knew that Aaron will be happy to see Moses after 40 years. And verse 15, now you shall speak to him and put the words in his mouth. And I will be with your mouth and with his mouth. You see, it's God who is doing everything. And I will teach you what you shall do. I am with you. Verse 16. So he shall be your spokesman to the people. And he himself shall be as a mouth for you. Listen to this. And you shall be to him as God. Why are you listening to unbelievers? Psalm 82 says, you are God. Jesus confirms it, you are God. When you allow God, God, God puts himself in you. So you can't be normal. You shall be unto him as God, capital G-O-D, capital G, not small g. God says, I will make you me. Just be willing. Oh, I think I'm too deep there. Vicky, back, back off. I'm too deep there. I'm losing some people already. Let us go to prayers. I don't want to lose you. Go back and read your Bible. Ah, oh, Jesus, help us. Okay. Exodus 4 verse 31. <laughs> Let us pray. Exodus 4 verse, 4 verse 31 says, So the people believed. And when they heard that the Lord had visited the children of Israel and that he had looked on their afflictions, then they bowed their heads and worshipped. Shall we bow our heads in prayer? Shall we bow our heads in worship and in prayer? Oh, Father, help us. Help us to get it. It is not rocket science. It is kingdom, <laughs> kingdom business. Oh. Prayer point number one. Lord, please give me your rod of authority to serve you and your people. Just like he turned Moses' shepherd's rod into a rod of authority. And also in Psalm 110. Lord, please give me your rod of authority. But you can only ask that when you have surrendered, right? To serve. You are supposed to be a servant. Jesus is the ultimate servant king. So we are kings, but we are servants. We know it with Queen Elizabeth. She was a queen, but she served her people till her last breath. That's kingdom mentality. Prayer point number two, Lord. Please give me the grace to be humble. You have to humble yourself. Don't, don't say, God, humble me. That, that will be bad. You don't want that. You want to be humble. You want to know I am a king, but I want to be a humble king. Lord, give me that grace. Help me. I want to be humble before you. I don't want to raise myself up because when I raise myself up, you will throw me down. But when I come to you humbly, you will raise me up. So, prayer point three, when I am humble, then you will call me to that place of authority that you have for me. Okay, so two and three come together. Prayer point four, Lord, send me helpers like Aaron. Yes, they are, because it's a great job. It can be daunting. So, we need helpers. He will send his rod of authority, the rod of strength from Zion. Or some, even some 20, some 20 says, uh, may, 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 the Lord, <clears throat> may the Lord answer you in the day of trouble. May the name of the God of Jacob defend you. Verse 2. May he send you help from the sanctuary and strengthen you out of Zion. So that's the thing. 
understood what, what Psalm 110 is talking about. That he will, the Lord shall send the rod of your strength out of Zion. Rule in the midst of your enemies. Shall we pray? Marco Sarata is Kalama Sanctum. Ziba ba ariga roda azakata chelela kai chelela kai chelela kai. Jesus, you said, those who have an ear, let them hear. Lord, I pray that your children would have heard you, that their hearts would have been soft and moist, and that they would have received you, that they would know that they are kings and rulers, and they should not allow the enemy to rule over them, but they should rule over their enemy. Rule in the midst of your enemies. Marco Asarata. Eskalama Sanctum, Azibarigaroda Azakata. Father, we come humbly before you so you can raise us up, so that we can take that position of authority, so that we can receive the rod of authority and serve you and your people in any capacity that you have placed us in. We will understand that no matter what our daily jobs are, that we are there to represent the king. So God give us that mindset to represent the king. And when we need help, we should not despair because the same way you sent Aaron to assist Moses, you will send people to assist us. Jesus had his disciples. He was God. He needed help. So God sent us help when we need help. Jesus said, if he needed angels, the Father will send. Lord, when we need supernatural help, send us supernatural help. When we need physical help, send us physical help. We want to serve you and we want to serve the people that you have given to us. We want to be kings. Kings, but servants. Servanthood. Servanthood. Stewardship. We want to steward properly everything that you have given to us. May your name be glorified. May we be blessed as we know you, as we work according to your will. And may generations after us talk about us, even as we are talking about the people of old, now and forever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The rod of authority. Okay, communion time, sense. Communion time. Never ever be like grasshoppers in your eyes. Be the giant. Let the giant become grasshoppers to you. You are the king. You rule over them. Any situation, you rule by the authority of heaven. And those who fight you are rebels and they'll be punished. All right. God always has enough. God always has enough. When the manna was falling in the wilderness, God told the people, gather what you need. The people that gathered little did not lack. The people that gathered more was a waste of time because everyone had enough. There's always enough. So, Father, we thank you. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, the CEO of heaven and earth, of all the galaxies. You rule in the heavens. You rule here on earth. You rule under the earth. You you own it all. So we give you praise. We give you honor. You are the boss. You are the king of all kings and the lord of all lords. We acknowledge you and we worship you. We say, be glorified, be magnified in Jesus' name. Amen. So when Jesus, at the Last Supper, had finished giving thanks, he took the bread, 
because he had told his disciples, I am the bread of life. He who eats of me will never go hungry. And if you have eaten of me, you will never die. So he took the bread and he broke it. And he gave to his disciples and said, take this all of you and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. And they obeyed, even though it didn't make human sense. They obeyed. They might have been wondering, because all they saw was a physical human being that they thought was their king here on earth. They did not have the revelation that you and I have today. But they believed. That's the clue. There lies the power. Thank you, Jesus, for doing this for us. Amen. And so when supper was ended in the same way, he took the cup and he gave thanks. He gave the cup to his disciples and he said, take this all of you and drink of it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and the everlasting covenant, which will be shed for you and for all men so that sins may be forgiven. The blood he shed for the forgiveness of sin. It's available to you. Do you want your sin to be forgiven? Don't live in sin. Take the blood bath. Drink it, bath it, wear it, speak to it. It speaks back to you. The blood of Jesus speaks better things than that of Abel. He's still interceding for us in heaven. So enjoy the benefits of knowing King Jesus. The blood of Jesus. So Father, we thank you. I, we know that we don't get it all. We can't get it all. After all, we are here in the flesh. And that's why you say we should trust you. So Lord, we trust you. If the disciples of Jesus, who didn't know him as we know him today as God, could trust him, how much more can we trust him in, in this generation? So Father, we say thank you for loving us so much and sending your son. Lord Jesus, thank you so much for loving us and coming for us, coming to our rescue. Like you sent Moses to deliver the children of Israel, you came to deliver us. And thank you, sweet Holy Spirit, that you are still here. You infuse us with yourself. You choose us to be your dwelling place. So we are the temples of the Holy Spirit individually and as a church. Holy Spirit, thank you for all that you are making known to us, you, all that you are telling us, all that you are teaching us, all that you are revealing to us. Help us to receive this knowledge and steward it well. Understand it's a privilege. Understand it is treasure. And we should take good care of this treasure. We bless your name. We honor you. We worship you. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. Amen. The blood, the body of Christ. Amen. most precious blood of our Lord, our King, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.
give you glory lord we give you glory lord as we honor you we give you glory lord as we honor you you are wonderful you are worthy o lord you are wonderful you are worthy o lord we give you glory lord as we worship you we give you glory lord as we worship you cause you are wonderful you are worthy oh lord you are wonderful you are worthy oh lord amen 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 <clears throat> thank you lord jesus thank you thank you thank you for offering yourself you offered up yourself you gave up yourself you said nobody takes my life i lay it down and i'll pick it up again that's why your name is above all names that's why you are the king of all kings thank you that you did that for us we received the exchange you took our sin and you gave us your righteousness you laid it all down for us and that's why salvation is a free gift but you paid the exorbitant price we can receive it as a free gift but you paid the price lord jesus so we say thank you thank you lord jesus for doing this for us father we thank you lord jesus we thank you sweet holy spirit we thank you god the father God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, one eternal and everlasting God. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. All right, sense. <clears throat> We've come to the end of 2 hours again. <laughs> How time runs. or flies <laughs> this time it doesn't run it flies when you are having fun so yes we've had fun with the king of all kings remember to go and represent him well and remember it's not about what people think or say forget about the what ifs do what you know to do okay it's not about whether people believe suppose they don't believe me suppose they say this suppose forget all that it's only an excuse ask god for the strength the empowerment you see you and you have to go through certain things in order to learn that moses had to 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 receive the grace to 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 catch the the snake he he knew that made him know this god that has made me grab hold of this snake by the tail You try catching a snake by the tail it will just come with its mouth and snap you. But God showed him see kingdom way is not your way. You just have to obey. Trust and obey. Trust and obey. If you've heard God's voice do it. If it's difficult because it mostly is ask him for the grace. And really that's why people not you know non believers re- religious people fight true christians because you are doing outrageous things that they can understand they, that's what the pharisees were telling jesus oh this man doesn't know about the sabbath here yeah, the sabbath was not made for for uh, man was not made for sabbath sabbath was made for man what are you talking about rise up anyway don't let me get you deeper than i've already done <laughs> Bible studies you need to know the word Tuesday UK time 6 pm for 30 minutes youth bible study come and read the word for yourself same Tuesday 
and Wednesdays and Fridays, 7 p.m. to 8 p.m., one hour, Bible study for everyone. And I've said, we don't have Sunday schools. We teach our babies the real world. We give them meat. They are capable. They chew real meat so that they can grow up properly. Just telling them stories. Yeah, you can tell them stories when they are sleeping. But give, let them eat first. <laughs> let them eat first. So that they don't wake up in the night and, and, and scream. They will know that Jesus is with them always. Anyway, so Tuesday, Wednesdays and Friday, 7 to 8 p.m. And we are punctual. Um, Thursday, 9 p.m., a prayer mantle. That's your, your altar for supplication. Bring your, God wants to hear you. He wants to talk to you. He's your daddy. He wants a conversation with you. And that's all prayer is, conversation. All right. Then Friday, after you've worked hard the whole week, the physical body is weak. So you come into the presence of the Holy Spirit and say, Lord, empower me. Lord, renew me. Rejuvenate me. That's the fire hour of prayer. 10 p.m. on Friday night. Don't miss any of this. It's for your own good. We are serving you by making these opportunities available. We here, we are serving you. So make use of these times. Okay? And of course, support the work. So into the kingdom. It's not their thing and my thing. It's our thing. Jesus says, give and it shall be given to you. If you don't do it willingly, that's why you hear some people use means to tell you how to give. Because it's for your own good. Me, I'm just telling you, if you like, you do. If you don't like, live up. Giving blesses you. I give for my own blessing. You should give for your own blessing. Do it or leave it. I'm not, I'm, I'm really not pushing it. Read the word. Jesus says give. So if you're obedient, do what Jesus says, not what I say. So don't let people, because your mind is not kingdom. You don't understand that kingdom works on, on its own automatically. All the information you need is on, on, on YouTube. Go there. Let your heart speak to you. The whole, if you have the Holy Spirit living in you, you should know what to do. You shouldn't sit there for somebody to beg you and talk and talk and talk and talk. To bless you? You want me to talk until I'm blue or black or red or what? To bless you? Don't you know it's your own blessing? Don't you know you bless yourself when you give? Jesus said, with any house you go to, stay there and leave from there. If they love themselves, they should feed you. But if they don't love themselves, when you leave there, <laughs> dust yourself of them. It's, an, uh, uh, it's a testimony against them that they saw good soil and could not sow into it. It's a testimony against. Read and listen to what you are reading. Don't wait for Victoria to come and tell you. Give and it shall be given. Whatever you give will be given back to you. You give good, good comes back. You give bad, bad comes back. Be wise. Be wise. We are talking about kingdom, everlasting life. Not what we are doing here on earth. Here is just preparation time. It's what you saw here that you read. Peter said, we've left all. Jesus says, good. I'm happy you left all. Because you'll be blessed here and you'll be blessed forever. Love yourself. Lay down your life for Jesus. Serve him with all that you have. Serve him to your last breath. As long as you are breathing, that means you have job, you have work to do. You are on duty. So do it. All right. I will love you and I will leave you. And I bless you. I pray. I really pray for you because God wants to bless you. 
I pray for you that you will truly listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. That you pray and you fast. We are, we are praying and fasting the whole month of September. I hope you are doing it. It's for your own good. All these things. You are sowing here, sowing there, sowing here, sowing there. You don't know which one will grow. That's what the Bible says in Ecclesiastes 11. Throw your bread upon many waters. Just so, in prayer, in fasting, in giving, in loving, in calling people up, caring for people, loving people. That's what God wants. And he will reward you according to what you do. Alrighty. Love you. Praying for you. And I bless you right now. I declare over you. That the blood of Jesus is your refuge. That the light of the Holy Spirit is your shield. And the love of the Father is a permanent firewall of protection around you. Now and forever. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Love you. Jesus loves you more. See you around. God bless.